Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my study. And we've got a real treat passage for us this morning uh, in John 6. One of those passages that, when you understand it, uh, expands your mind and uh, hopefully expands your heart as well. Now, I'd love to begin by asking you a simple question. How did you become a Christian? When? How, what was the mechanics of it? What persuaded you to follow Jesus? If you're not yet a Christian, you're watching on to this, then... Um, What do you think it takes to become a Christian? Uh, Why not just hit pause, discuss, come back together again in a minute. Well, I guess there'll be any number of ways in which we have talked about that. Some of us will have been raised in the church. Some of us will have become Christians in later life. Some of us will have had a profound sort of light bulb moment. Others just simply would have grown up sort of reflecting on these things. But I wonder if we'll have... Uh, described it the way verse 37 describes it. Uh, Jesus talks about uh, coming to him, which I think is shorthand here for uh, believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Okay, That's what John's been persuading us through the last few chapters, isn't it? That Jesus is the the Christ, he's the Messiah, he's the, the one sent by God to be the king of the universe and who has come to die to uh, save his people from their sins. And uh, I take it here, Jesus is not uh, is not allowing a belief in him on whatever terms we want. It is a belief in him that is rooted in the things that Jesus is revealing about himself, that he is indeed the son of the father. Which again, we're back to, aren't we? That tight relationship between the father and the son. Uh, so coming to Jesus is, is believing the truth about who Jesus is and trusting him with our future. But the question is, does it start with us? Well, no, have a look at the beginning of verse 37. All those the Father gives me will come to me. See, why did you come to Jesus? Because God determined that you would. Um, There is a certainty, isn't it? They will come to Jesus. Who are the people who will come to Jesus? Those the Father has given as a gift to the Son. So it's as if uh, the Father has gone Christmas shopping and he's, he's... he just loves the son so much that he wants to give him lots of gifts for Christmas. So he's he's gone around and he's chosen all the people in the whole of human history who are going to trust in Jesus. Uh, and those he chooses are those that he gives to the son. And those he chooses and gives to the son certainly will put their trust in Jesus. So how did you become a Christian? You became a Christian because the father decided to give you as a gift to Jesus. Now, at first, at first glance, that, that seems to undermine our uh, autonomy, our ability to, to, to discern our own future. But of course, in our sinful natures, we wouldn't choose Jesus. It takes uh, for God to uh, invade our hearts, minds, lives and change our way of thinking to see who Jesus is. And we know that's true. Ephesians 2 tells us that um, we're saved by grace and even our faith is a gift of God. So whilst it it, it takes out of our hands the, the idea that, that our faith has come from within us, that we can boast in our cleverness, in our uh, wisdom in spotting who Jesus was, it also grounds our salvation in hope. Because look what Jesus goes on to say. Whoever comes to me, that is all the people the Father chose to give to the Son who have come to Jesus, whoever Uh, comes to me, I will never drive away. So Jesus never rejects the gifts from the Father, even if they are difficult people, even if they're terribly sinful people like the Apostle Paul. Uh, Anybody who puts their trust in Jesus will be saved. And Jesus will never drive away, never drive away. For I've come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And the Father's will is that Jesus comes into the world, reveals God to us, dies and rises to spare us from our sins, and draw in faith all those whom the Father is giving to the Son. So if you're a Christian, you're a Christian because God wills it so. And Jesus will never drive you away. What a glorious thing that is. And that points us towards the end of the story, doesn't it? Uh, beginning of verse 39, and this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those that he's given me. So uh, you might think that you're holding on to Jesus by by the skin of your fingernails. 
will know that it is Jesus' purpose to hold on to you with both of his hands. There is no sense in which we can look to the future and think, my faith is so frail, it's so up and down, that I might let go of Jesus. If you're a Christian, we, we, we need to take seriously the warnings not to let go of Jesus. We need to listen to those warnings. We need to uh, make sure that we, we remain in Jesus by letting his word remain in us. But if we're taking those things seriously, know that that's the way that Jesus is holding on to us. And it is he pr- primarily who holds on to us, not we who hold on to him. We hold on to him because he, first of all, has taken hold of us. And because it's his purpose not to lose any of us, and not now, not in the future, because it is his purpose to save all those the Father has chosen, we can be absolutely sure that uh, as we follow Jesus, uh, we won't be like the, the, the herd of bison where the weakest are picked off at the back, but we will persevere to the end however weak however frail our minds become we do need to know that it is first of all jesus purpose to save us that should be a great comfort to us even as it perhaps undermines our confidence in ourselves it helps us to remember that when we lack confidence in ourselves we can have complete confidence in jesus let's pray shall we heavenly father thank you so much that you've chosen your people given them to Jesus, and that as we have come to Jesus, so we are uh, your uh, treasured possession, and Jesus will never drive us away, but keep hold of us to the end. Please help us to look forward to that, that last day with great joy, knowing that we will be there. Help us to keep going to the end of the race. For Jesus' sake. Amen.